Mist 3, Exile, from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia. Mist 3, Exile, is the third title in the Mist series of first-person adventure video games. While the preceding games in the series, Mist and Riven, were produced by Cyan and published by Broderbund, Exile was developed by Presto Studios and published by Ubisoft. The game was released on four compact discs for both Macintosh and Windows PCs on May 7, 2001. Versions for the Xbox and PlayStation 2 were released in late 2002. As in previous games, the player assumes the role of the Stranger, a friend of Atris. A member of the Dunny race, Atris can create links to other worlds called Ages by writing descriptive books. In Exile, Atris has written an age for the Dunny to live on while rebuilding their civilization. It is stolen, however, by a mysterious figure. The stranger pursues the thief in an attempt to reclaim Atris's book. The creators of the Myst franchise gave the task of creating the third Myst game to Presto Studios, known for its adventure game series, The Journeyman Project. Presto sought to develop a diverse and logical approach to puzzles and ages, and work to make the villain sympathetically multifaceted. The developers hired Jack Wall to develop a musical style different from earlier composer Robin Miller, but still recognizable as a missed game. The project required millions of U.S. dollars and more than two years to complete. Exile was received well by critics. British newspaper The Daily Telegraph called it the best game in the Mist series. Conversely, longtime critics of the series complained that Exile continued to prove that Mist's slower gameplay did not belong in the fast-paced modern game market. GameSpot editor Greg Kasavin described the Mist series as having lost its relevance. Despite selling more than one million units within the first year of release, Exile fared poorer commercially than Mist and Riven, which had sold more than 10 million units combined. Presto Studios ceased software development entirely after the game's release, and Myst 4, Revelation, the fourth game in the series, was developed and published solely by Ubisoft. Table of Contents Section 1. Gameplay Section 2. Plot Section 3. Development Section 3. Subsection 1. Audio Section 4. Reception Section 5. References. Section 6. External links. This article contains an info box containing an image of the cover of the game and the following information. Mist 3 Exile was developed by Presto Studios and published by Ubisoft. It was designed by Mary DeMarle and Phil Saunders, and its music was composed by Jack Wall. It runs on the Sprint engine and was released for the Mac OS, Microsoft Windows, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. The release dates for Windows and Macintosh were May 7, 2001 in North America and September 21, 2001 in Europe. The release dates for the Xbox were September 17, 2002 in North America and October 4, 2002 in Europe. The release dates for the PlayStation 2 were September 19, 2002 in North America and October 4, 2002 in Europe. Mist 3 Exile is classified as a single-player graphic adventure game and has an ESRB rating of E and a PEGI rating of 3+. It was released in a Ford CD-ROM set and also as a single DVD-ROM. This ends the info box. Section 1. Gameplay. This section includes an image of an example of gameplay in the Amateria Age of Exile Mist 3. Items such as journals are accessible via the bottom menu. Gameplay in Mist 3 Exile is similar to that of its predecessors. The player explores immersive pre-rendered environments known as ages by using either mouse clicks or the spacebar for movement from set nodes across each age. Unlike previous games, which employed a series of still images, Exile uses a free look system which gives the player a 360 degree field of view. The game also has an optional zip mode, like Mist and Riven, to cross explored terrain quickly by skipping several nodes. Clicking allows the player to manipulate objects and pick up items. 
the on-screen cursor changes in context to show possible actions. Each of the game's four ages has a distinctive look and theme. Players begin their journey on the Age of Jinanin, which acts as a hub linking the other three ages and as a Lesson Age, demonstrating important principles for later puzzles. The other three ages are Voltaic, a dusty island riddled with canyons filled with man-made constructions, Amateria, a mechanical age in the middle of a vast sea, and Adana, a world of preserved nature with abundant plant and animal life. By gathering clues and manipulating the environment, the player solves thematically linked puzzles. For example, the book leading to Voltaic is accessed by aligning beams of light across a canyon. The age itself contains similar light-based puzzles. Adana's plant-filled puzzles require manipulation of the age's ecosystem. Puzzles often include observing interactions between elements of the environment, then adjusting the links between them. The player can also pick up and view journals or pages written by game characters which reveal backstory and give hints to solving puzzles. Cursor mode allows the player to select items from a personal inventory at the bottom of the screen. Section 2. Plot. Exile begins ten years after the events of Riven when the stranger arrives at the home of Atris and his wife Catherine. Atris is a scientist and explorer who has mastered an ancient practice known as the art. He can create links to different worlds, called ages, by writing special books. This ability is by an ancient civilization known as the Dunny, whose society crumbles after the Dunny city is devastated by a plague. Atris calls the stranger to his home to display his newest age, Relishan, which Atris has designed as a new home for the Dunny survivors. As Atris is preparing to leave for Relishan, a mysterious man appears in Atris's study, steals the Relishan book, and leaves behind another. Following the thief, the stranger arrives at Jinanin, an age that Atris had written long before as a way to teach the art to his sons. Because the thief has caused considerable damage to the Jinanin book, Atris cannot accompany the stranger. The mysterious man is named Savedro and is played by Brad Durif. Twenty years earlier, Atris's wayward sons, Cirrus and Akinar, destroyed Savedro's home age of Narayan and trapped him on Jinanin. Savedro believes his family is dead and swears vengeance on Atris, unaware that Atris has already imprisoned his sons for their crimes and that Savedro's family is still alive. The game can end several ways depending on the player's actions. In the most ideal scenario, Savedro returns to Narayan peacefully after giving back the Book of Relishan. Other endings result in Savedro destroying Relishan or killing the player. Another option allows the player to leave Savedro trapped forever. Section 3. Development This section contains an image of Maria Gallant and Audrey Uller on the blue screen set and with the footage composited with computer-generated elements. Cyan Inc. and Mattel, then the owner of the Mist and Riven franchise, offered the task of developing the sequel to several development companies. According to game developer, interested parties developed proposals including story concepts, analysis of the first two games, technology discussion, and technology demonstration. A core team from Presto Studios held discussions which analyzed Mist and Riven, then set out specific goals for the third game. According to Presto founder and producer Greg Uller, these goals included visual variety in the ages, a satisfying ending, and a way for players to gauge their progress during the game. The progress goal was very important for Uller, who stated, quote, Players who had failed to complete Mr. Riven did so because they were unsure of how much remained of the game and what their goals were, end quote. Initially, Presto prepared three possible storylines for the game to follow. A meeting between Cyan, Presto, and Mattel yielded a completely different plot, which explored some of the loose ends hinted at in Myst. Presto spent millions of US dollars developing the game, using the studio's entire staff to complete the project. Development took two and a half years, of which nine months were spent on design and pre-production. Pre-rendered environments, like those in the earlier Myst games, were used providing what producer Dan Irish described as the, quote, 
photorealistic ability to present the world in a convincing way. The 360-degree camera view also allows you to experience it in a way that makes it feel real." End quote. Particular attention was developed to strong visual styles and mechanics, which a critic described as, quote, a collaboration of Jules Verne, Rube Goldberg, and Claus Oldenburg, end quote. As in Mist and Riven, the developers used live-action sequences instead of computer-generated actors and props. Irish stated that using computer graphics would have reminded players they were in a game, quote, which would wreck the immersion that is so critical to the Mist games, end quote. Live actors were filmed on a blue screen and then placed in the digital environments using chroma key technology. Before any shooting could begin, all of the sets were constructed and filled with props the actors could use, costumes for all the characters were fashioned, and each scene was plotted out by storyboard. Rand Miller returned to play Atris, a role he had filled since the first Mist game. Brad Dorif, a professional actor, agreed to play Saavedro because he was a huge Mist fan. Dorif noted that acting for a game was much more difficult than working on movie sets, as he could not see the player or interact with the game environment. Other actors included Maria Gallant as Atris's wife Catherine, and Greg Uller's daughter Audrey in a cameo as Atris's daughter Yisha. Preparation for the video shoots took four months. Filming the scenes took just seven days. Uller noted that the video was one aspect of Mist that Presto did wrong. Because high-definition video cameras were not used, the resulting video was not as crisp as developers had hoped. Section 3, Subsection 1, Audio The music for Mist and Riven was composed by Robin Miller. Jack Wall created the score for the third installment. Irish stated that developing the music was one of the hardest aspects of Exile. Quote, We had to match or exceed the surrealistic style of music that Robin Miller had pioneered. It had to be recognizable as Mist, but unique and distinctive. End quote. Wall looked at the increasing complexity of games as an opportunity to give players a soundtrack with as much force as a movie score. Wall also echoed Irish's opinion that he wanted to make a very different score from the wonderful sonic pastiche of Mist and Riven, yet still recognizable as a sequel to the earlier games. Wall considered copying Miller's style as the safe, yet unappealing route that was expected of him. In preparation for his composition, Wall studied Miller's music, noting that he and Miller differed on their use of music theory. Miller, according to Wall, felt that, quote, melody could easily get in the way of the experience of playing the game, end quote. But Wall felt that some melody provided something thematic for the player to grasp. Wall wanted the music to have a sense of purpose while still preserving interactivity, so he composed reward music for completing puzzles and recorded the score with a real orchestra. This section contains a table of the Mist 3 Exile The Soundtrack track list. Track 1, Main Theme, 4 minutes 22 seconds. Track 2, Opening Titles, 1 minute 54 seconds. Track 3, Atris's Study, 2 minutes 46 seconds. Track 4, Saavedro Enters, 45 seconds. Track 5, Saavedro's Theme, 2 minutes 14 seconds. Track 6, A Heartbeat Away, 1 minute 47 seconds. Track 7, Saavedro's Lair, 1 minute 20 seconds. Track 8, Theme from Amateria, 2 minutes 15 seconds. Track 9, The Spider Spinner, 1 minute 11 seconds. Track 10, Libra's Lever, 1 minute 13 seconds. Track 11, The Wheels of Wonder, 1 minute 29 seconds. Track 12, Theme from Madonna, 3 minutes 24 seconds. Track 13, Deadwood Ridge, 2 minutes 14 seconds. Track 14, Swing Vines, 2 minutes 54 seconds. Track 15, The Forest and the Swamp, 2 minutes 0 seconds. Track 16, Theme from Voltaic, 3 minutes 10 seconds. Track 17, The Airship Chasm, 3 minutes 14 seconds. Track 18, Energy Island, 1 minute 40 seconds. Track 19, The Confrontation, 2 minutes 52 seconds. Track 20, He Sees Hope, 
2 minutes 7 seconds. Track 21, Let Me Go, 2 minutes 14 seconds. Track 22, You've Been Followed, 29 seconds. Track 23, Into Oblivion, 40 seconds. Track 24, All Is Lost, 48 seconds. Track 25, Trapped, 45 seconds. Track 27, The Tide Has Turned, 1 minute 30 seconds. Track 27, The Dilemma, 2 minutes 2 seconds. Track 28, All Is Well My Friend, 1 minute 6 seconds. Track 29, Going Home, 1 minute 10 seconds. Track 30, which is a bonus track, Exile, 3 minutes 27 seconds. The entire album has a total playing time of 59 minutes, 2 seconds. Section 4. Reception. This section contains an info box containing the following information. Game Rankings gave Myst 3 Exile a score of 79% over 41 reviews. Metacritic gave it a score of 83% over 22 reviews. Game Revolution rated it a B-. GameSpot rated it 87 out of 100. IGN rated it 80 out of 100. This ends the info box. Exile was generally received positively upon release. The PC version holds a 79% favorable rating at Game Ratings and an 83% rating at Metacritic. The game was the best-selling title in North America within a week of release, selling 75,000 copies within two weeks. Exile sold 1 million units within 12 months. Exile's graphics and sound received nearly universal praise and were credited with completing the game's immersion. The puzzles were described as less difficult and more contained, meaning that players did not have to experiment with switches and then click several screens away to see the effect, as in Riven. Macworld's Peter Cohen praised Presto for giving out bits of story throughout the game rather than providing exposition only during opening and closing sequences. The pacing and reward system was also appreciated by reviewers. IGN concluded their review of the game by stating that Presto had done a pretty good job with notable addition to the series. The Daily Telegraph offered even stronger praise, saying that Presto had crafted the best missed game in the series thus far, a sentiment that was echoed in other publications. Criticism of the game included complaints about the four-disc format of the game, which required players to swap out the installer disc with one of the other discs every time the player entered a new age. GameSpot's Scott Osborne noticed that due to the frame-by-frame -frame nature of gameplay, it was occasionally difficult to discern where players were allowed to venture and what areas were unreachable. The Los Angeles Times reported that bugs including a lack of sound, incompatibility with certain graphics cards, and system crashes were present in as many as 10% of the first shipment of discs. Reviewers who had not enjoyed Mr. Riven stated that there was nothing new or substantially different in the game to warrant interest. The New York Times observed, Exile has everything you loved or hated about Mist and Riven. Despite strong sales, Exile was considered commercially disappointing compared to the phenomenal sales of the first two games, which had sold nearly 10 million units by the time of Exile's release. GameSpot editor Greg Cassavin told Time magazine that Mist is no longer as relevant to gamers as it used to be, and that it represents an antiquated style of gaming compared to the 3D action games being released at the time. Soon after Exile's release, Presto announced it was discontinuing software development. The Xbox title, Whacked, was to be the last title produced by the company. Presto employee Michael Saladino pointed to the Maverick style of the studio and its inability to develop more than one title at a time as its reasons for its folding. The next game in the Myst series, entitled Revelation, would be produced and published by Ubisoft. This article has 31 unique references and has external links to Ubisoft, Moby Games, the Internet Movie Database, and Mysterium. This article is part of a series regarding the Myst franchise and related topics. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.